can we be honest with each other for a minute? There are some things that Jesus asks his followers to do that are just really unnatural. There was a time that somebody wanted to be healed, and so he told them, hey, let me spit in your eyes. Who wants that? Or the time when they had one meal, and he said, go and feed 5,000 plus people with it. Or the time where people wanted to kill him and his followers, and he said, hey, let's go visit where they are. Or when he says, if you want to save your life, you need to lose it. None of these things make sense on the surface. There's something that's unnatural about them. There's something that's counterintuitive about them. And one of the most unnatural commands that Jesus gives us is that we are to forgive others. He says it right up front of his ministry in Matthew. He's doing this great sermon on the mount. And he's teaching people how to pray. And he prays what we call the Lord's Prayer, and he teaches that to them. And he says, Our Father in heaven, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come, your will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us today our daily bread. Forgive us our debts, as we also have forgiven our debtors. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from the evil one. And in case you didn't catch it, When he talked about it in the prayer itself, he says this, For if you forgive men when they sin against you, your heavenly Father will also forgive you. But if you do not forgive men their sins, your Father will not forgive your sins. Did you catch the significance there? Jesus is tying our salvation and our connection with God and our relationship with him to how well we give forgiveness to others. But forgiveness, let's be honest, isn't something natural. It's not something we feel like doing. When we get hurt, we don't want to forgive. We want retribution. We want justice in our own eyes. And so we probably will try and qualify what Jesus is saying. I mean, two weeks ago, we talked about how every one of us have people that offend us Some of those offenses are really big, some are are smaller. And so the smaller offenses, sure, we can forgive those. Like, I'll bless the guy that cut me off in traffic. I can let that go. Or the person who, who chews with their mouth open. Or the mom that has a bad day and raises her voice. Done. All those are taken care of. Because it's more comfortable for me to let go of these little things than it is for some of the other things. Because there are some hurts that we carry that are enormous. There are horrible and despicable things that have been done to each of us that we all have experienced. And we look at these things and we think that these things are unforgivable. And I'm not naive enough to think that you do not have one of those. Because I have them too. I have family members, more than one that I know has been abused in different ways. And what I wish upon the people that have done it in my heart, a lot of times is is the wrath of God far more than the grace of God. I've had close friends that I've poured my heart out to. And then I've seen them take what I've given them, those trusting secrets, and I've had them use it against me. What unforgivable hurt are you carrying? It's the kid who bullied you in school that you still have nightmares about. Is it the parent that you just wanted them to love you and to praise you and you did everything you could to please them, but they never, they never seemed like they were satisfied? And you always felt insignificant. Maybe it's a spouse who's crushed your heart, a friend who's betrayed you, a business partner who you thought was going to be there for you and wasn't, or maybe it was somebody that you were supposed to be able to trust, who was supposed to be able to keep you safe, and they were the very person that took advantage of you. And you look at those wounds and those hurts that you're carrying, and you look back to Jesus when he says, forgive 
our debts as we forgive our debtors. And you say, do I really, do I really need to forgive that? Because I don't feel like I can. And so Jesus answers that unspoken question over and over again. Because if the one set of verses we just read wasn't enough, Jesus' call for us to forgive is not a one-time thing. Earlier in Matthew chapter 5, verses 43 and 44, he says, you've heard it said, love your neighbor and hate your enemy. But I tell you, love your enemies. Pray for those who persecute you. Or in Luke chapter 17, he's talking to his close disciples again. He says, if your brother or sister sins against you, rebuke them. And if they repent, forgive them. Even if they sin against you seven times in a day, and seven times come back to you saying, I repent, you must forgive them. Hating those who hurt us is normal. Wanting retribution is natural. And Jesus doesn't leave room for it. It might be one thing if you had to forgive somebody once or once a year or once every seven years. And he's like, look, if they do it seven times a day, you forgive them all seven times. That's a lot of forgiveness. And it doesn't mean like you act like nothing happens because you rebuke what's happened and what they've done, which means like you acknowledge the pain that's caused and you work to make things right and you work to find healing, which may mean that you have to have some boundaries in place in your life. It may mean that someone's going to have to work to earn back your trust or earn back the relationship, or it could mean that for some people there is just going to be a cutoff. All of that is legitimate. But you still have to forgive. And if you're reading closely, you might think, well, I can get out of that because Jesus said, if they repent in the verses in Luke. But remember, what we read before that from Matthew 5. Love your enemies. Pray for those who persecute you. You can't love someone you can't work and pray for their best life if you're unwilling to forgive them. So how can we forgive someone when it is so unnatural to us? The first thing we have to acknowledge is that forgiveness isn't a natural thing. And it's not a fair thing. You're not treating someone like their actions deserve when you forgive them. And so it's not something that you're going to be like just excited to do. It's not going to be something that you're going to be uh, just, going to, just going to happen. But we're still commanded to do it. After Jesus had told them to forgive them seven times a day, if they come back seven times, the apostles looked to Jesus and they said, Lord, increase our faith. See, forgiveness isn't a feeling. It is an act of faith. It is an intentional choice that we make. Whether we feel like it or not, this is something we do. It's not just something we ask for, though. It is something that we respond out of. We are responding to God's grace. And that is what gives us the faith to be able to do what we're doing. It's not a natural thing. It is a supernatural, empowered thing. We love because he first loved us, and we also forgive because he has forgiven us first. We can't grasp the weight of our sin against God. And each one of us has it. Some of us might feel like we're better than somebody else, but in the eyes of God and what we've done, as far as our sin towards him, the ways that we have hurt him, the ways that we've gone against him, the ways that we've wronged him, none of us can stand when we look at that. In fact, it's so hard for us to grasp that in Matthew chapter 18, Jesus has to tell a parable, he tells a story, to try to help us to get it, try and get us to understand exactly what He's rescuing us from. And to get us to understand exactly what it is 
that God would need to forgive us of. So he tells a story of a king who's calling in his servants who owe him to settle the debts. And one servant comes in, and if you take uh, the currency that's listed in Matthew chapter 18 and you turn it into like today's average wages, this servant walks in owing over $9 billion to the king. Which makes me ask a few questions like, where did that money go? And how did he spend it? And how is he still employed as a servant to the king? And because there is no way that this servant can pay back the debt, he's about to get tossed into prison for the rest of his life. But he begs for mercy. And the king sees him. And the king treats him in a way that's not fair. Fair would be, you've got this debt, pay it or go to jail. Instead, the king looks at the debt that is unpayable by this man. And he looks at the man and he cancels the debt. It's not that it just simply goes away, it's that he takes on the weight of that $9 billion that's not coming back. He takes on the cost, he takes on the weight of that debt, and he cancels it. And he sends the guy away free. For us, the king canceled that debt that we owe by taking it on himself when he went to the cross. That everything that we have done, that we should be paying back to him, that justice that he deserves, that retribution that is owed to him, he says, all of that, I will take it on myself. I will pay it myself. You do not owe me. Again, you are free. There is a supernatural love that makes that happen. And if we are going to be able to forgive the unforgivable, then we have to experience that and know it and live in it too, or we do not have a chance of moving forward. But that story about the guy who gets forgiven takes an interesting turn. You see, he had been given, forgiven so much, he was supposed to be free. He was supposed to be free to not just live, but to live like the king that had freed him. That in gratitude, he would become like the one who had set him free. And so the servant, instead of doing that, does something so disturbing that the other people who see it can't sit by and do nothing. He walks up to somebody who owed him about $16,000. It's not nothing, but it's not $9 billion either. And instead of offering him the same mercy that he had been given... He threw him in prison, harshly and quickly, for the debt that he was owed. And so the servants go back to the king and say, can you believe this guy? And what just happened? And the king was so disturbed by this, that he called the servant back and he reinstated the debt and he threw him in to prison. Remember, If you forgive men when they sin against you, your heavenly Father will also forgive you. But if you do not forgive men their sins, your Father will not forgive your sins. Forgiveness was supposed to make him look like the king. That the king gives grace, and so he was supposed to give grace too. He was supposed to help the one who was sinned against Not just for the one that owed him money's good, but for his own good. Because you can't hold on to your connection to God and hold on to the wound at the same time. You can't hold his hand and demand retribution and vengeance with the other. Because you need both to grab his big hand. Exercising faith to forgive the unforgivable keeps you close to the heart of God. 
and it transforms you now and it transforms eternity. There is something so significant about doing this unnatural act of forgiveness that people notice and are changed by it. Just like they notice that the man didn't forgive, though they notice when it happens too. In February 2015, ISIS was peaking in some areas and they took 21 Egyptian Christians to the beach in Libya. And they shot a video that they posted on YouTube that was viewed way too many times. They had the men kneel down on the beach. And over and over again, they called these men that were there, these Christian men, people of the cross. Using it as a derogatory term. Not knowing that they were probably so proud to carry that label. And they told them that the people of the cross were not worthy of living. And that if they found basically others like them, that they were not worthy of living too. And so what was going to happen to these men was going to happen to you as well. And they executed all 21 of them on that beach. Well, the story spread throughout the Islamic world, especially into the Islamic nation of Egypt, because it was their citizens who had been killed that day. And so the biggest talk show in the country had one of the mothers come on about a week, week and a half after this had taken place. And they asked her, if you could do anything to these men that killed your son, what would you do? What punishment would be enough? And they were looking for natural answers, right? That they would have the same fate, that they would be in jail forever, that you know, them and their children would be uh, eliminated from the earth, whatever it is that they thought they were going to hear. Instead, she looked at the camera and she said, I only wish for all these men to find forgiveness in Jesus Christ. I only wish for all these men who took the lives of my son and 21 other Christian young men that they would know the love of Jesus Christ, that they would find true life and true forgiveness through faith in him. That's my one desire. This mom had been forgiven of so much that even in her pain and in her despair, she responded to that grace by choosing in faith to offer forgiveness. I can't imagine the horrific pain that she carried. But in front of the nation and in front of the world, she in faith forgave the unforgivable. And that unnatural forgiveness shook the country. In fact, tens of thousands of people responded by turning in faith to Jesus because she was willing to stand in faith to forgive. It wasn't about how much they deserved it or not, but it was how free she desired to live. So here we are. What is it that you have been carrying around that has been unforgivable? And in faith, could you do something about it? Could you forgive today? Now let's be honest. Some of these things are so big that even though you know the forgiveness of Christ and even though His Spirit lives in you, it's going to be a process of forgiving in faith where you're going to forgive again and again and again and you're going to start having to forgive every hour and then maybe every day and then maybe every week and then maybe every month until you set yourself and that person free. But it is only... It is only when we're willing to forgive in the supernatural, unnatural way that we will actually be able to heal. That we will be brought close to Jesus and stay there with him. And that other people, people we have no idea about, will be so captured by the forgiveness that we have offered in faith that not only will it set us free, but it can set them free as well. So it only happens if you know the forgiveness of Jesus first. 
And so if that's place where you need to be today, and you've just first realized that, that you have this debt that you cannot pay back to him, he is ready and willing to forgive you of it, to wipe the debt out, to make you new, to welcome you into his family and fill you with his spirit so that you will have a place to belong and you have a purpose for your life that is so much greater than you have right now. And all he's asking you to do is to acknowledge the truth, that you have these things that you've done that you owe him, that you can't repay. To know that because he loves you, he's paid the price for you. And that he wants to welcome you home to him. And that you're ready to do that. So Lord, I pray that if that's the case for anyone who's listening right now, that your spirit would come and speak to them in such a way that they would undeniably know that you are there. And that as they turn to you, that they are yours. Help them to see all of what you've done for them. And help them to live fully into the real life you have for them when they connect with you in Christ. I pray these things in your name. Amen. And for those people that have just experienced that, or for those of you that have that, but still have this unforgiven thing that you've got, I've got homework for you. Maybe even go and do it right now. Find a bowl of water. And then take your hands and place it in the bowl and pull up a scoop like this and hold in your hands the pain, the hurt, the person who did this to you. Place all of that in the water in your hands. And then when you're ready, let it go. Let the water go back into the bowl as a sign of that in faith you are forgiving this pain. You are forgiving this hurt. You are letting it go. That you can walk away free and clean of whatever it is that's been done to you. Let me pray one more time for you before we leave today. This is a prayer I found that I want to share with you. Father, today we ask that you would increase our faith. I know today that they, there are people that are listening to this that have been hurt deeply in their lives, impacted significantly by the sins and betrayal of others. God, we ask that your word would speak life and hope, and your spirit would give us the power to do what humanly we don't have the power to do on our own. God, we ask that you would increase our faith to offer the same forgiveness you've offered to us through your son Jesus. In his name we pray.